to another edition of the Empower Hour. I am Al Kumar. And I am Hanifa. And we are your hosts each and every Wednesday where we come to you with impactful topics of discussion that affect our everyday lives. Today, of course, will be no different than any other week. Um, we're talking health this week. And the topic is sugar, the sweetest drug of choice. I like that. <laughs> and with us to tackle this discussion is the one and only Minister of Wellness. He's with us in, on the phone. Are you there, Minister? Yes, yes. Can you all hear me? We can we hear, can hear you. you. Yes. We're hoping that we can hear you a little bit louder. If we can get, a, get you up a little louder, that would be helpful. Um, thank you so much for joining us for this um, special topic of discussion that I couldn't find not a single soul on earth to better, to better tackle than you. <laughs> yeah, because you've actually changed my whole ramification as it relates to sugar in the body. You, sir, did that for me. So uh, I'm sure the audience is in for a super special treat. Um, well, it might be a treat, <laughs> it might not be a treat, depending on, depending on your peripheral. Mm -hmm. So how are you feeling, Minister? Tell us uh, where you are, where you are in the world. I'm, I'm doing good, and I'm in uh, St. Louis, Missouri right now. Um, I, I hope I'm coming in better. Yes, yes, you are. Thank you so much. Okay, yes. okay, good. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just here back in my hometown of St. Louis, Missouri, and, and spreading the truth about health and wellness. And as you state, uh, this is a, a very important topic concerning sugar because uh, it is what I call the crack co the legal crack cocaine for the masses. But I was talking to a long-term friend of mine who I've known since my days in the Marines, and he told me that I need to stop saying comparing sugar to crack cocaine, and I need to start uh, comparing it to heroin. And based off of what I continue to uh, go through and trying to teach people and help people get off what I call the death train, I have uh, upped my connection from, from sugar to cocaine to sugar to heroin because that is how addicting that, um, that this stuff has become. Right. And before we dig deep into um, the sugar canes, <laughs> tell us um, a little bit about who you are and why you um, are, are suitable to tackle this discussion. Yeah, so uh, seven years ago now, when I was on the police department here in St. Louis, I was 260 pounds and I had heart disease. I've lost all the men in my family on my father's side of the family. He had nine strokes and died at age 66 and I lost all the all of my uncles to strokes and heart attacks. And I started to learn and I came across some information by medical doctors who buck the brainwashing they receive in medical school and decided they're gonna teach people about uh, real medicine, which is in food. And when I found that out, and I found out that all of these diseases wreaking havoc in our society don't have to be, uh, I end up losing 100 pounds and I reversed heart disease. And ever since, ever when I, during that process, I found my purpose in life. I found what I was called to do. And I left the police department and in 2000, I left the police department in 2016. And since that time, I've been blessed to help coach over 200 clients and I have over three dozen uh, health success stories, not just in this nation, but across the world. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, you definitely are um, doing your tour, tour the, tour the health tour, <laughs> tour de France, tour de, <laughs> I'm so corny. Um, and we miss you here in the D.C. area, because I know this was one of your stops for a short mm -hmm. term, and uh, we gained so much from you while you were here, and then you had to go again, the universe sent you off, and uh, so we do miss you here in the DMV. And thank you so much for coming here and dropping so much knowledge on us while, while here. Um, sugar. 
Why? Why is sugar, according to um, you, such a dangerous drug? <laughs> because because it's made the same way as heroin and crack cocaine. It, it, it comes, see, food is supposed to give us two things, macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients is carbs and fat. That's where we get our calories. The micronutrients, which should be more adequately referred to as the medicines in food, gives us vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients. Now, here's the catch. The reason why we're all so fat and sick is because we're eating protein, carbs, and fat with no medicinal value. We're eating low-nutrient uh, franken foods, as I call them. Now, here, here's the issue when for sick. For, for centuries, when you take a whole and you remove the medicinal value from it, not only does it make you fat and sick, but the, the reason why it, it, it contributes to uh, having such an epidemic of obesity and in in sickness in our society is that that process turns it into a, a psychological drug. It turns it into an addictive drug. Heroin comes from a plant. Opioids come from a plant. Pain, all of those fake uh, poisons in Walgreens and uh, in CVS, you know, they're, they're, they're legal dope shacks. All of those drugs, they, they're fake medicines. They come from plants. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's why the, the sugar is so addicting because it's literally made the same way. White flour, white sugar, opioids, crack cocaine, heroin, it's all the same thing, just some are socially acceptable and then others aren't, uh, aren't acceptable unless, you, you know, you can be, I mean, there's many people that are functioning addicts of all these other type of drugs, but sugar, uh, they, they put it in all of the processed foods because it's extremely addicting and then unlike heroin, it's sweet. Uh, so it's, a, it's, the, it's the taste that kills. Mm. while being as addicting as all of these other drugs. So if the, the, the people that are um, creating these foods, putting it on the shelf for us to consume, if are they aware of the, um, the detriment that sugar has on the body? And if so, is this deliberate? Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Sh sugar, sugar, it is a dehydrator. Uh, the same thing with sodium, also. But but sugar, it pulls, and the primary place, the the primary organ in the body that it pulls sugar out of is the brain, mm. which creates mental illness. We have people in St. Louis running around like chickens with their head cut off because uh, our people are killing each other like dogs in the street, left and right. But nobody wants to bring in the Minister of Wellness to talk about the effect that nutrition has on the brain. That's something I talked about uh, when I was out there last year, uh, how junk food causes mental illness. So sugar, it pulls nutrients out of the body. That's creating the epidemic of fibroids. And uh, we have women that are pretty much, uh, there's an epidemic of castration. Uh, and women with, uh, you know, the, the all removing the entire reproductive, all of this is coming uh, from a diet that's very high, particularly in sugar. Now, as far as it being by design, absolutely, because the, the purpose of Franken foods is to make you addict. Uh, mm -hmm. These people, they they don't care about anything else but money. They're blinded by their love for money. The love of money is the root of all evil. So they want you to be addict. When you sink your teeth into that Twinkie, a donut, a cake, a cookie, a chip, there they want it to be so addicting that you're willing to kill yourself then get off of it. And, and that's what we have. That's what I have to battle with people where uh, people are, the, you know, the, the addiction is so powerful, you know, that, that people are, they will kill themselves. And they'll tell you that, hey, man, I don't want to hear that stuff, man, about no health. I ain't eating no rabbit food. You ain't going to tell me what to eat. I just, I had a sister that told me she'd rather have a stroke. Uh, to change her diet. Well, what sane person would talk like that? Right. Well, she, you, well the, 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 the foods have made us, because they're drugs, we're eating drugs, and it's made everyone insane when it comes to the most uh, critical area of, of, of life, and that's our health. It's really sad. I just want to be clear. 
are we is it is it safe to say that there is a direct connection to what we consume and 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 what people are consuming and violence is that what we're, we're saying here that's exactly what I'm saying. It's been known for years. Dr. Africa, uh, he been screaming at our people uh, so much. That's why he's so salty, because he's been screaming about this stuff since the 1970s. Uh, his book, Nutricide, and then he learned that information from other uh, black psychiatrists and psychologists. Uh, there's nutrients. The brain is an organ just like the heart. It's, the, it's an organ just like the heart. So when, when you sink your teeth, into a cheeseburger and french fry and by the way they, they put sugar in everything including yeah. the burgers yes. so when you everything. sink your teeth in that it is, is not just giving you heart disease it's also affecting your mind because the brain needs nutrients to function properly also there's certain nutrients and hormones in our brain that controls behavior you have GABA, taurine, glutamine, uh, melatonin uh, vitamin B6, uh, glycine, all of these, all of these are nutrients in the brain that control all types of behavior, anxiety, depression, suicidal tendencies, homicidal tendencies, aggression. So absolutely, you can take someone that grew up in a perfect loving home and you feed them a brain destructive diet and you can turn them into a psychopath. And then you, the icing on the cake is these psychiatric drugs. Um, yeah, but this is my personal story with fibroids. You mentioned that fibroids, that could be a direct correlation to the sugar intake because I used to, at one point in my life, I used to make meals out of sugar. Mm -hmm. I would eat cake and cookies and ice cream for dinner mm -hmm. and go to sleep. And I think <clears throat> I did so much damage to my body that I did, it, um, it created fibroids. Mm -hmm. And when I weaned myself off of sugar, and I'm still doing that because it, it, the drug is real. Mm -hmm. It's real. Mm -hmm. And well, when I wean myself off of 95% of all the sugars, um, my fibroids went away. Really? Oh, mm. yeah. Yeah, my fibroids went away. Yeah, don't have, don't have that issue mm. anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, and that's a testament to what you're saying. Um, what are some of the other names of things that, sh that people may not recognize that is sugar? but it's not called sugar good question uh any anything that says sucrose fructose you have high fructose corn syrup mm -hmm. all these different syrups uh people are brainwashed into believing that brown sugar is healthier that's a myth mm -hmm. uh, high fructose corn syrup of course is is one of the worst however uh, the the sugar if it's not organic sugar, which is still a drug, people think organic sugar is, is, is some type, some kind of way healthy. It's not concentrates. That's not juice concentrates. That's nothing but sugar. Yeah, yeah. And, and they've made the sugar, uh, they, they've designed it, these biochemists that create these franken foods that induce mass addiction. Uh, they've, they've created uh, the sugar. This processed sugar is actually 1,000 times more potent than what is supposed to be in nature. So they've made it uh, far more addicting and they test it before they release the Franken foods. Uh, so that's why you, you, you know, we want to stay away from anything that has a package on it yeah. and we want to stick to eating fresh fruits and vegetables. But the food addiction has made us so insane that people call their real medicine rabbit food. That's how foolish food addiction has made us. If I put before somebody a plate of fruits and vegetables, they look at me and tell me that's rabbit food, but then they'll eat themselves to death and run the Walgreens and, 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 and throw down a bunch of uh, pills that actually are nothing but rip-offs from the real thing in nature. And, and, and that's the, the sad thing that we're in. So I tell people, stay away from processed foods. You want to get to where your sugar uh, come from fresh fruit, but again, that's easier said than done because uh, we have 12 components of food addiction that we're fighting against, and that's why I recommend that anyone who is serious about changing, I have a 12-part video series on my YouTube channel where I meticulously dive into every single component 
a food addiction that's keeping people on the death train. Mm. Mm. And what is that YouTube channel? The minute the minister of wellness. That's my universal title on all social media platforms. So just go to the minister of wellness, and I have a whole playlist, and I have it transcribed on my Facebook page. The minister of wellness. I have twelve different articles. That's how serious this topic is. I took the time to transcribe them and to do videos on. It took me a lot of time uh, to put that information together, and I have people that watch my videos and today I received a testimony from a brother who lost 85 pounds uh, since March from watching my watching my videos and I got a couple other success stories I have to post today a sister reversing high blood pressure uh, one other uh, brother he uh, reversed acid reflux so uh, this is the type of emails that I get I'm I health coach medical doctors wow. and I got medical doctors that reach out to me uh, for assistance because they know that uh, the, the truth is the truth is undeniable. Yeah, yeah that is real. That, and then when you see the results, yeah. like I say, you know, I'm a living testament myself of your of your teachings. Mm -hmm. And when the results, you, you how can you deny it? I'm yeah. a living witness that, right. you know, I'm better, I'm more healthier just by taking your advice. Um, sugar in baby formula. You know, me and my, a friend of mine one time was just at her home chit-chatting and we got to talking about baby formula, and we was curious as to what was in it, what was the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So we went and we looked it up and kind of find out, like, it was like 46% high fructose corn syrup. Wow. So almost half of the baby, the, 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 the ingredients in baby formula is sugar. Can you talk a little bit about what that does to the, to the body of a newborn? Well, it destroys their immune. It, it destroys their immune system. The the whole birthing process is barbaric. Uh, we, we we just so far behind, sister. And one thing that's frustrating to me uh, as a black man is when I'm when I'm dealing specifically with our people is that there there's other forms of our brainwashing that we have that we are rising up to reject. I I believe that's called becoming conscience. Uh, but but what what's frustrating and sad at the same time is that we'll become conscious about everything else except our health. That entire birthing process in the, in the Western world is a hoax, and it's designed to make these children sick. From the moment a mother gets pregnant, they're fed a bunch of lies. They give them a folic acid pill that contributes to birth defects. Now they're giving pregnant women flu shots with all these poisons yes, in them. Uh, even even the, the, the way they rush women in, in through the, the birthing process and then the baby comes out and gets stuck with all these vaccines and then uh, you're discouraged from breastfeeding, you're under all this stress and trauma to get out of the hospital. All of that affects the baby. And then the baby comes out and then they, they put on formula uh, which didn't even exist throughout human history. So the entire thing, you know, I mean, we, I mean, it, it should be more natural birthing centers for women, especially if we're supposed to be so-called conscious and awakened and moving away from it. I don't understand uh, why we still, uh, why we still utilizing these death centers, which view women as being sick when they become pregnant. That's what they view you as. They think there's something wrong with you. And that we got to get that we got to get whatever's in you out of you as soon as possible by any means necessary. I, I read a, a alarming statistic that when you take when you take you could take a woman that then had three C sections. That's a, that's another hoax. Mm -hmm. And they and told her all these lies that mm -hmm. uh, that the Most High didn't give you the ability to birth naturally. Mm -hmm. And you take that same woman under the care of an experienced midwife at home, and all of a sudden she popping babies out naturally with no problem. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, when, um, one of the things that I do, I realized, um, and this started from the hospital, because I went to a hospital, and it started from the, the, the hospital um, of how anti-breastfeeding our people are. It's mm -hmm. very interesting, and I, I'm, I only became aware of it because I choose to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. But it started from the hospital with the nurse, and mm -hmm. she was really trying to discourage me um, because 
uh, Negasi had like dry lips and she was she was pointing like you know he seemed like he's not getting enough and this is my first time breastfeeding right. and so it's like you know I, I was already anxious Right. And she wasn't helping. Um, the uh, Indian lady actually came in and really assisted me mm -hmm. and just was like, just keep at it. He will latch on. Yeah. And once he latch on, it's a go. I stayed with it. But I can see how a lot of parents are discouraged from breastfeeding. And also, too, I'm finding that a lot of people are about convenience. Yeah. They don't want to be inconvenienced, you know, to where people be like, not me, I couldn't do it. I couldn't breastfeed, you know. Yeah. Um, and seven months later, I'm still breastfeeding, and it's fine, yeah. you know. And you work. And I, exactly. <laughs> so, for those who say, well, she doesn't work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so, my, my question is um, around just our people in general are you starting to see maybe more and more people receiving the message or are you finding that you a lot of us are rejecting the message to our own detriment and, I, and before you answer that i just wanted to make a quick point on to what we were just talking about about the whole baby scenario and i just wanted to mention yeah. too that some of the other things that we don't take into consideration is like when we when the baby is birthed and the first thing they see is these the bright shiny lights in their eyes yep. and how that hurts, yep. hurts their eyes and then the, even the process of laying down versus squatting as as a woman having a baby and uh and then having a baby underwater as opposed to out in the elements and how all those different components are uh, come into play where we have kind of normalized insanity is what i call it but i just wanted to throw that out there but going back to hanifa's question yeah, yeah, and that was a great point. Yeah, that's why I call it the death care system. Uh, as far as people wanting to receive the truth, here, here's what I found out, and I've been blessed. Uh, I went out there and I worked with Rock Newman, who you all know, he's very prestigious out there. And I've been on, I've been on Joe Madison twice. I've been on um, all these other different Sirius XM channels and Armstrong Williams and. I'm on, I post videos on uh, Philip Scott channel. He got a million subscribers. I have videos that have gotten uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, views. And, and yet, um, I, what I find is that people enjoy, for the most part, hearing the message that I deliver because of the manner that I deliver it. Mm -hmm. But the food addiction is so strong that blocks them from being able to receive it and take action. So it, it's more of it's more of like like for instance, I'll go and I'll speak at a, a gospel concert, four hundred black people, and you know our people, we the most overweight, obese population in in, in or maybe in world history. That's how bad of a condition we in. And I'll get up. And, you know, my booming voice and, you know, everybody, they almost, you know, shouting and clapping and screaming and yelling because of the, because of the delivery style. Mm -hmm. But then when it's time to take action, mm -hmm. when the talking is done, when the preaching is over and it's time to let's come to the table, the minister of wellness table, let's, let's really learn how to make some real changes, it's crickets. Mm -hmm. I maybe get about one or two percent at two percent so that's what I find out is that I gotta if I do a video that reaches like I did a video a month ago that reached two hundred and six thousand people from around the world mm -hmm. uh, maybe about two five thousand of them or, or so fifteen fifteen percent or, or maybe five percent two to five percent will come to my page and then out of that two to five percent only even smaller percentage of them can can actually implement and take the information and to and to take control we need rehab centers sisters that's what we need we need food addiction recovery centers that are affordable i know some that exist and they work but they're very expensive and and that's what we need we need insurance companies to be willing to uh, to be willing to cover people going to rehab because that's that's what really is needed to get off this stuff. But so that, that if that makes sense, that's the way you know. Like the video I posted today on Phil's uh, channel when I spoke, a, a lady over Christian magazine invited me to speak. 
and it was nothing but church leaders there. And I spoke, and again, because of the delivery, oh, amen, and yes, sir, and we got it, and yeah, yeah. But, I mean, like one or two of them came to my table afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's like they know, they appreciate and respect that what I'm saying is the truth, and then they then I, I get a lot of love because of the delivery style, but, but when it comes time to take action, unfortunately, it, it just it, it's a minimal response and I and I relate that to the to the addiction. Because if, if it was on the flip side yeah. and I was traveling around and I start and I start focusing my speaking and evolving my experiences as a police officer for seven years. If I start doing that, okay, then I could go speak before 500 black folk. And after I get done telling them what the system is doing to us in the criminal justice system, oh yeah, if I got a book, you know, black cop exposes his time, to, oh man, that, then I'd be sold out. Mm -hmm. You know, and, it, and the response will be much more, but because I'm dealing with something, I'm dealing with the greatest uh, a, a type of self-suicide that we've embraced, yep. you know, that, that's what it, it, it is. It's, it's, it can be because the, uh, very, very frustrating. Yeah, yeah, like I said, like with any other addiction, I guess that, you know, first is acceptance. And, you know, and then if you, if, if everywhere you go, it's a social norm, you know, it's a social norm to drink uh, sweet cocktails at the bar. You know what I'm saying? Have cake at birthdays or yeah. Thanksgiving. You know, every other thing on the plate has sugar in it. When it becomes socially normal, it becomes that much more difficult, I think, to kick the habit. You know, the um, what do you call those houses where someone is like, is it a halfway? No, the halfway house is, is prison, coming out of prison. Mm -hmm. right? Like, um, I, when you when you was uh, just speaking, Natalia. Yeah, when he just mentioned rehab um, places, I was like, what if, you know, people start just opening up houses in different areas where it's like a rehabil rehabilitation from sugar, where someone could come there, you know, yeah. you have to check yourself in. You want to get healthy and maybe it's a two-week program or a 21-day program. Of course, right. you pay and everything like that. I mean, what it, are, are these things possible to do? There is, is there like certification? I'm just saying for people who are listening, because someone may, you know, that, that just came to my mind as you were speaking, but is there like a process someone would have to go through, maybe get certified first before they do something like that, Nathaniel? Yes, I mean, because uh, I, the only, the one that I know, I know Dr. Joe Furman, he has a, a Eat to Live wellness retreat in San Diego, but I mean, he goes all out which is why it's so expensive. I mean, you're talking about he got chefs. He, he takes your keys from you, and he got chefs that makes your food. It, it's, it's, it, he makes it to where there's no way you can fail. And, and so that, that would take a lot for, I mean, I could teach people how to, uh, through the food addiction, but as far as getting the center together and running, you know, it's just a lot that goes into that. Because also he has uh, psychiatry, he has psychologists there, talking to people through their addictions because there's a lot that goes with an addiction. Yeah. I mean, you have emotional eating, you have the traumas that we all go through in life, you know, the stresses that we all go through in life. You know, even myself personally, you know, people, because of, because of how overweight and obese people are, you know, of course, for, for the average black man, I'm, I'm a, I have a very lean bill, but I'm not in top shape because of the because of the the stresses of life of just being an entrepreneur and dealing with all the mess that comes with trying to be be the minister of wellness mm -hmm. and so we do we turn to food yeah. you know that a lot for for us for a lot of us that's that's our source of guilty pleasure uh and it takes a lot to get past that so yeah he has massage therapists he hires he has chefs that he hired. Uh, that, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of money that yeah. that goes into trying to run yeah. a place yeah. like that. But but it works. You know, when you put people in that environment, that's people uh, who have gone there and reverse diabetic neuropathy. And once you break, once you go that first six weeks and you break through uh, the addiction, that sticking point, and then usually from there, uh, the sky's the limit. But the food system needs to change. But the problem is, is that 
here, here's the situation. The problem, the cold hard reality is, is that most people, if you present to them, we're wired, and this is called the cram circuit. We're wired, the 10th component of food addiction. We're wired to want high caloric food, to want sugary food. Oh, yeah. The food industry knows this. So when you put before a human being a sugary cake in a bowl of apples, most of us are going to cho choose the cake. Oh yeah. Because we're, we're, we're wired to, to want what's not good for us, especially when it comes to food. So as long as you have a system that is allowed to create these franken foods and, and load them up with sugar, that's going to be difficult because truth be told, sister, the cultures that the cultures that still exist today that don't have the sickness and disease we have, you know what it is, sister? Mm -hmm. Because they're forced to be that way. It's not because they have some great willpower <laughs> that we don't have. They don't have a choice because if they don't grow their own food, they're going to die. So mm -hmm. therefore, we have this phenomenon that a lot of, and a lot of our people get upset when I tell them this, but this is the truth. Uh, in a lot of parts in the South during slavery, where our people were allowed to grow their own food, they were living a very long life. Mm. Wow. Because they had to grow their own fruits and vegetables. So, but as soon as Western culture breaks into one of them rural environments, or let, let's say they go and they make their way into rural Australia or rural Kenya, where the people have traditionally, they force you grow your own vegetables or you die. So yeah, they got no breast cancer, no high blood pressure, none of those diseases. But then they go in there, they so-called civilize them and put a KFC in the McDonald's there. What's gonna to happen to our people in rural Kenya? Are they gonna to choose to continue to work hard to grow their own food from scratch? Or now I can go and in five minutes, I can have me a bucket of fried chicken. That's addicting. That tastes well, better. We, we, you, right. Well, yeah, yeah, because quote, it's unquote. addicting. I, it, right, yeah, it, it's more so the addiction. And then you'll come back to rural Kenya, and all of a sudden the people that had no high blood pressure, no cancer, now all of a sudden they got breast cancer wearing this month because all the women get breast cancer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's real talk. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the rejecting the um, good, good for you foods. Again, that's another thing I see firsthand being here at a vegan restaurant, Everlasting Life, and you know we get a lot of newcomers, and some people come with friends or family members who are vegan, but they're not, and I watch how they're turning those up off on the healthy food and exchange, no, nah, I don't want that, I'm gonna go around the corner to IHOP or whatever, and I find it so fascinating how we'll frown up at healthy food in exchange for junk food. It's fascinating the mind how the mind works and a lot of times I'll even ask I say have you ever tried this and most often they, they haven't even tried it they don't even you know they turn it nose up on things that they haven't even tried in exchange for things that are killing us it's fascinating yeah um what yeah and, and go ahead yeah and and, and again and 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 that's why we have all of these societal problems. Like I said, here in St. Louis, uh, I think it's been over 200 murders in this little tiny city. It's ridiculous, but no one wants to talk about mental illness and mental health because we're all food at, because everybody's food addicted and, and there's just an extreme uh, resistance to that. Chronic illness is the number one killer by far of black people and, uh, and, and we could take control over that situation, we can. Uh, we can take control, but it is it, it, it is sad. It is really sad to see people embracing their own genocide. And that's why I call the standard American diet the greatest weapon of mass destruction this world has ever seen. But there needs to be boycotting of these death shacks. But now the problem is, is that the death shacks have gotten smart. And so now they're putting all these vegan versions of, of, of the Franken foods uh, so now KFC and McDonald's and Impala, you know, you got all these, uh, now they're becoming veganized, but it's still ultra processed food and it's not going to solve people's health problems. Uh, so they're, they're starting to change for the sake of money. Even a lot of the plant milks are garbage that they sell in the stores. Like they'll sell almond milk 
that only got two almonds in it and the rest of it is chemicals and water and they got people thinking that that's that's a that's healthier right um so you know if we're real lazy that's one of the main components of food addiction laziness that's the ninth component of food addiction when you give a human being the option between doing the work to prepare their own food or have somebody else make it we're going to choose to have somebody else make it and that's how we're wired we're wired to seek the most for the least amount of effort so it's a tough situation you know when we look in the past and say yeah but our people back in the day we used to be so fit and lean that's because we were they were forced to they were forced to hunt and be outdoors and 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 wring their own clothes and you think they would you think they would have been putting all that work in the ring in their own clothes if they had a dryer mm. they would have put that in the dryer just like us if they had an option to do things you think they would have been walking 10 miles a day if they could have hopped in a car and got there in five minutes no wow so we're, we're talking about we're talking about a food system that has been scientifically created to 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 tap into human nature and human tendencies so you have to fight the natural to be healthy wow because who who would do that no one none of those none of the people back then would make that option they wish they had cars they wish they had toilets Right. They wish they had the technology we had, but they didn't have that. So yeah, they were a hundred years old with six packs, still having children. Wow. So, but, but 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 we living in a different era now. Yeah, yeah. So I'm here. Well, what I'm hearing you saying is that 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 the advancement of technology is actually adding to our our ailments. That Absolutely, because it, it plays into our natural tendency to be lazy. We're all, it's called energy conservation. I'm real blunt, so I'm calling it laziness, but, but the scientific term, I'm supposed to say energy conservation. That's what it's called. That's a survival mechanism that we all have to where we naturally, what, what's that saying? Work uh, smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. And that's how we all are as human beings. You know, if you can get to work in 10 minutes by driving why in the world would you choose to walk and take you two hours to get there no most of us are going to go ahead and hop in the car it's healthier to walk there but 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 energy conservation said no nah, you got a working car unless you absolutely have to walk just hop in the car even if it's one mile away wow if you're just joining us family we are talking to the minister of wellness um if you want to call in, if you have a question for the minister, call us at 240-455-5934. Again, that's 240-455-5934. Um, how does it relate, how does sugar relate to our intellect and like test scoring and things like that for children or how we, how our motor skills function um, intellectually? I don't even know if that's a proper terminology cognitive. but cognitive yeah thanks <laughs> yeah it, it affects it a lot because again the building blocks of our brain is two things is uh is fatty acids and sugar that's what our brain runs off of uh, but when we put the wrong fats which we do with fried foods and when we put the wrong sugar when we put the wrong type of type of uh sugars in our brain and then it, it, it causes malfunction. So again, we have GABA that controls anxiety and fear that gets pulled out. We have a uh, glutamine that creates depression and aggressive behavior in children. Uh, we have uh, uh, learning disabilities and autism epidemic, and that's all linked to the inflammation of the brain through a high sugar diet along with other environmental factors. So they've already done the studies and show improvement in behavior and learning when you feed children correctly, but it's important to start them off the right way because once you get a, a child is naturally born uh, with a nature that does not want what's best for it. Mm. Uh, so if you allow a child to tap into that nature uh, to where they're addicted uh, to the wrong foods, then it's very, very difficult to get them to, to, get them to change. Yeah. Wow. 
Uh, yeah. But yeah, but uh, you know, feeding children properly uh, is, is very important for their development, their happiness, their intelligence. Uh, we have an epidemic of learning disabilities, autism, and obesity uh, in our youth because food addicted parents are killing their own children. Mm. Yeah, I used to I used to frown up and, and shake my head at those parents who uh, you offer their child a snack or or, or, or or lollipop or something and they'll no no my child no my child don't eat that and I used to be like mm. now I clearly understand the wisdom behind what the, when those parents do that so kudos to those parents who don't even allow their children to touch sugar at all I think that's a beautiful thing we have a caller on the line caller are you there? I'm here. What's up, sister? Greetings, uh, brother. Where are you calling from? I'm here in Silver Spring. You're in Silver Spring? Okay, we're going to try to get you a little louder. We can't, we can barely hear you. I don't know if that's on our end or not. But go ahead with your question. Well, uh, I just want to make a statement. First, I want to thank for being on because this is a very important topic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Second of all, I want to know what is his opinion on the role of capitalism within the black community in our diet, i.e. looking at the situation with this whole Popeye chicken craze and stupid stuff like that and our addictions to these um, high sugary foods and so forth. And how does it play a role in when you see the violence in the street and the, and the uh, diagnosis of ADHD and such things like that with our youth? Good question. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Thank, thank you, uh, brother, for the question. Yeah, is yeah, America profits from sickness and death, mm -hmm. and that's why the nation is uh, going down the drains. It profits from sickness and death. And how long can a society exist to where its economy is built off of killing people? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that you know, that absolutely. I mean, we have a for-profit, trillion, two trillion dollar pharmaceutical industry, the most powerful industry on the face of this planet and they control everything they want everybody on these dangerous poisons from birth to death and the food industry helps them accomplish that goal because if you get people addicted to this stuff and it creates all of these diseases from heart disease to mental illness which create which contributes to the violence and so forth and then that fuels the economy i know uh, there's millions of marriages that get destroyed because the women are unable to have children, or the men are unable to produce children. Infertility is linked to diet. Mm. And so we have, so that fuels the divorce court system. Uh, they've gone into prisons, and they've showed that when you change the diet of the prisoners, it improves behavior. Mm. Uh, so they're contributing to recidivism, keeping that industry alive, which we know is just uh, the, the modern day form of slavery. Uh, the, uh, divorce courts, uh, it's, it's a rocket. Mm. It's all a rocket from, from people being addicted uh, to a eating and living style that is destructive to their physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being. Um, and, and, and it's so destructive, again, brother, that the people that are uh, profiting from this destruction, uh, make no mistake about it, they're, they're food addicts themselves. They don't know anything about health. They get into cancers and stuff, too. Mm. Uh, and then when someone like me tries to rise up and give people the solution, I mean, make no mistake about it, I can go in the midst of every single, I can go in the, in the doggone black community of St. Louis right now with a bullhorn uh, and start preaching the truth to our people about what is being attempted to be to be uh to be in, that what is being done to us they ain't gonna listen to me they ain't gonna listen to me they gonna look at me and say that negro crazy i ain't eating that rabbit food and they gonna take their bus to that popeye's uh chicken sandwich you know so you know that's the conundrum that we're in where we have a force at work but then here i am and i've been blessed to been have been delivered from that force and I'm trying to uh, cry aloud, but y you can go on YouTube and look at some of my videos, and I got our people attacking me for telling them to stop eating fried chicken, for telling them to stop eating barbecue ribs. They cussing me out. They telling me to shut uh, to shut up, and that hey, I don't know what I'm talking about, and we all gonna die anyway. 
Okay, so um, that that's the beast of the standard American diet. It's a beast. Wow. I have a question. Okay. Can I ask something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Thanks for the insight. Okay. So the question I have, yes, I'm sir, sorry, brother. you guys, forgive me. Thanks sorry. for calling. Uh, let me get, get to this one. I'm, I apologize. Um, so my question is with, with, with black people, um, because I recently did a raw food. It was, it was a shot, like a couple of days, and I, I was talking to Alcom on the phone about this, but um, in doing the raw food, I realized that once you take sugar out, or e- and even salt, mm-hmm. you know, um, you are put in a position to where now you have to feel, right? Some things. Mm. And I found that I was really like snappy. Mm. And you know, my background is, is, is psychology. So immediately I'm just like, okay. I'm like, I don't snap to like four people and the week just started. And so I had to go and sit with those emotions and figure out what's going on. And I realized that a lot of it was suppressed emotions because I'm very like mm. um, expressive, mm-hmm. but finding that me trying to kind of taper that is is creating this suppression within myself that's not healthy. Mm. So of course I dealt with that. So it made me think of us as a people. Mm. Like how much of this, because we're talking about addiction, but if you are trying to take away the thing that keeps me sane from me, mm. I will fight you to the death for that. So how, how much of that is um, sugar, people, we're using sugar to cop- suppress, to co- exa- as a coping mechanism, because, I mean, the condition of black people in this country, you know, is really bleak, you know? Um, so how much of that would you say that we're using as a coping mechanism, a mechanism and if that is keeping me sane, and sane just merely, I'm just saying sane as far as allowing me not to really feel and lose my mind in this place, um, how do you how do you get that out of someone? How do you take that away from someone without them pretty much killing you? I mean, replace it with, right? Yeah, yeah, you, that's a, yeah, emotional, uh, emotional eating. Uh, and it's also called the, the, the ego trap. And the, the answer, the answer is you can't. It, it, I, I tell people all the time that uh, to, to leave, I, I have a term that I use, it's called an insane food zombie and that's the term that i use and and you can't you can't an insane food zombie is somebody like you said to where they're so hooked to this stuff it's the heron and the heron addict don't un, until the heron addict is ready to change if you try to take them off heron they will kill you they don't mm. they'll attack you and and that's what i say with an insane food zombie leave them alone mm. so i don't argue with nobody uh, whenever somebody come on my channel or my YouTube channel, I delete them. I don't argue with nobody. I don't go back and forth. I don't try to convince anybody of anything mm-hmm. uh, anymore. All I do is present the truth and the people that want the truth. But I get people that come on my channel and they get excited and they trying to go around and tell their friends and then they get met with resistance. And I tell them, you need to be careful mm-hmm. because you're dealing with a serious addiction here. Uh, so I, I, you know, so yeah, the, the answer is, is that uh, the, the sad fact of the matter is, is that most people uh, that, that they, they, they can't be reached. You have to wait until most, you kind of, you have to wait until they want to be reached and let them make that decision. And then, you know, give the, when they're willing to listen to the knowledge, you have to let people choose on their own. But you're right. This is heroin that we're dealing with. It's our drug. It's our sugar is our heroin it's the legal heroin it's acceptable it's legal it's acceptable to be uh three four hundred pounds overweight it's acceptable for i mean we have uh i mean they really they're really destructive against women i mean they i mean the doggone death care system they have uh we got poor sisters running around in their 20s with no breasts they were metastasized uh because a mammogram lied to them and told them they had cancer sugar feeds cancer cells 12 times the rate of normal cancer cells. They ain't got no uterus, no reproductive system, period. So no reproductive system, no breast, no nothing. Uh, all from a, uh, an addiction that they couldn't break. And then that, that addiction was exploited by the death care industry, which is the whole point. That's the point of the death train is to get you so hooked 
that you lose your mind to where you're willing to kill somebody that that is trying to help you, mm. and and then and, and then they profit from that. So I always tell you, you can't love people more than they love themselves. And unfortunately, as a minister of wellness, I care about people more than they do their own selves. And that's sad. And that's why when I health coach people, I don't health coach people for more than three months because I can't put all that energy. Uh, I used to do that where I put too much of my emotional well-being into somebody's health. And I can't do that no more because that's draining on me. Mm. You know, I'll be 300 dog on pounds trying to save everybody and their mama. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> So I, I just I, I put the information out, and then uh, and then I, I pray that everyone will you know come come into the the knowledge of the, the truth before it is too late. Yeah, yeah, we and we and we appreciate you, Minister. Yeah. We really do. Those of us who uh, hear you, we hear you and listen and, and take heed. Um, we have about five minutes left in the program. What what is um what is the worst thing you think um if you had to choose? One thing out of all the things that we eat and all the things that we drink, what are like the worst things you can eat and drink right now on the market? The worst thing that you could eat out of all that junk food, that's a loaded question, sister. Um, <laughs> let's see, the worst thing that someone could eat, some fried chicken. Really? Fried chicken, barbecue ribs, because uh, fried chicken, it comes from a diseased chicken that was fed the dead body parts of other chickens. So that's, I mean, that's evil. You don't, you don't make chickens eat other chickens so they can grow big and fat. Wow. So you take that flesh, you batter it with another type of herring called white flour that's very addicting and, and, and leaches nutrients from the brain causing mental illness. So then you take that and then you have the nerve to boil it inside of oil. Uh, at 400 plus degrees, when you boil oil, it creates, uh, well, the white flour creates acrylamides, which is cancer causing heterocyclic amines, uh, and then the, and then it's an imbalance of omega-6 to omega-3, which has a strong link to homicides, according to the National Institute of Health. So that's fried chicken. Then you got barbecue ribs. Uh, pork is not food for human beings. Uh, then you load it up, you slather it with a, a bunch of sugar called barbecue sauce, you throw it on the grill. When you grill animal flesh, uh, it creates a myriad of cancer-causing chemicals. So th those, those are right at the top. Then you got uh, dairy ice cream uh, that will come in there. You got donut, which is fried sugar. Uh, so it's sugar and it's deep fried. That's a donut. Mm. And then as far as drinks is concerned, of course, you have sodas. Uh, that's the deadliest, uh, these alcohols, uh, they're putting a bunch of chemicals in these alcohols. And of course, alcohol is liquid with sugar. And that's why that can create an immediate onset of rage and violence and depression and anxiety. Uh, so that would be to drink sodas, alcohol. Uh, then uh, now because of what they're putting in the wines, you know, even a couple uh, alcohol a day for women is it has a strong link to breast cancer. So the, those would be my uh, top on on those sides of the equation. Okay, so what? Let's go. Let's try to fix this problem at this point. We only got a few minutes left. <laughs> Woo! That's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what 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 do you recommend we do when our body is craving sugar? Well, you well, when, I mean, you you have to fight through the cravings, and you fight through the cravings with knowledge. So the solution is knowledge. The solution is that. You have to you have to go on a religious quest for health, and that's the truth. I'm not exaggerating. If you don't got unless you have the money to check yourself into a full blown rehab for six weeks, you have to go on a religious quest for knowledge. Learn everything you can about the dangers of sugar, processed foods, chemicals. That's what keeps me going, and that's why the people who watch my 28 part health seminar series on my YouTube channel their lives are transformed because the information wheels you uh, to victory. So knowledge is power and is learning how to eat the G-bombs, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. Each of those six foods prevent and reverse every single chronic illness that our people and all people are suffering from. Uh, but but that's, that's where it starts. When you have the craving, when you have knowledge and you know what it is, and you know that if you fight through it for a few days, 
that there's something better on the other side. When you have made a determination in your heart that the pain of battling that sugar addiction may endure for a night, but the joy of excellent health will come in the morning, and then you make it through. And then you start feeling good, and you start making delicious recipes, your taste buds change, you keep on learning, and learning and learning and learning and practicing what you learn, and then before you know it, like a caterpillar that becomes a butterfly, you, 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 get re, you become reborn again uh, with, with your health. Shay, have you had any lasting parting questions? Well, Minister, that we're gonna leave it there because you know, on that high note, uh, yeah, the, the dangers of sugar. We had somebody say we got to bring on on a Facebook page that y'all got to bring that brother back on. Yes. Yeah, you always dropping the science like nobody else I know on, on these particular topics, and so we would love to have you come back and and, and share with us again soon. Yeah, I'll be I'll, I'll be out there uh, soon. I I was out there for a weekend in March in the DMV area. A, a church had brought me in to speak, but I, that was just for the weekend. But it, it'll be some more things coming up. I just encourage people to share my information, speakers, website, and videos with these organizations out there that has uh, the budget and, and the means to bring in a speaker. You never know. You just share the information, and one of them will be excited enough and serious enough to reach out to me so I can uh, come back out there and uh, spread this life-saving information. And, and tell them one more time where they can get more information um, about you from. Uh, yeah, uh, social media is the Minister of Wellness. That's my social media. My website is the Minister of Wellness.com, but then I built the website specifically for health seminars, and that's my first and last name. NathanielJordan.com, NathanielJordan.com. So the Minister of Wellness.com, NathanielJordan.com, all social media, wherever you go to, Twitter, Instagram, so forth, just search for the Minister of Wellness. Ashe family, well, there you have it. Sugar, the sweetest drug. You know, we know now we got to stay off of that sugar because it does us no good. Um, until next week. Take care of each other, share the video, um, and spread the word. Peace and love.